Aesthetic procedures have seen an uptick in popularity as technology advances, and people are looking increasingly for various ways to tackle various concerns such as skin aging, pigmentation, fineness, and wrinkles, and lasers can be very effective at targeting that. Hi, I'm Dr. Angeline Yong. Welcome back to my channel. So in this video today, let's talk about how you can choose the right laser to target your various skin concerns. So lasers work by firing a very narrow beam of light of a specific wavelength to target a particular chromophore in the skin. And that chromophore can be a molecule such as water or even hemoglobin. And basically the laser with a particular wavelength is selectively absorbed by this chromophore, which then converts it to heat energy and then proceeds to actually degrade the particular particle. This can be in the form of a tattoo particle or tattoo molecule, for example, or in the form of unwanted blood vessels and capillaries or unwanted pigmentation, both in the epidermal layer and the dermal layer. So lasers are very specific, unlike things such as the IPL, which is intense pulse light, a broadband light, lasers usually emit a particular fixed wavelength. A good way of looking at lasers can be to first classify them as ablative or non-ablative lasers. So all lasers can be classified into either category. A non-ablative laser is a laser that does not actually damage the epidermal layer of the skin. The epidermal layer is intact and the laser wavelength bypasses the top layer of the skin to target deeper layers or deeper tissue. So this usually gives rise to easier recovery time, so there's not much barrier compromise. On the other hand, the ablative laser will also uh, ablate or vaporize part of the epidermal layer. And this will then give rise to a little bit more downtime in terms of scabbing and healing time. There are various common types of lasers that we deploy in aesthetics. Now, again, because of technological advancements, there are a lot of increasing different wavelengths that humankind is exploring. However, these may be the common ones that you'll come across and are very effective at treating various concerns. Firstly, we have the 595 nanometer wavelength laser. This is also commonly known as a vascular laser or a pulse dye laser. And we like to use this to target basically things that are red in the skin. For example, unwanted capillaries that you see in pesky rosacea, phalangitases that develop in photo-aged skin. You can also have growths such as cherry and geomas, and even fresh red surgical scars, or even red striae. Now, all these concerns can be very effectively targeted with the 595 nanometer wavelength laser because it is selectively well absorbed by a chromophore in the skin called hemoglobin. So that will actually be absorbed selectively and will break down these unwanted reads. Another very common wavelength that you will see widely deployed across you know, all aspects of aesthetic um, dermatology will be the NDYET wavelength. Uh, NDYET wavelength can be further classified into various pulse durations. For example, uh, NDYET with 1064 nanometer wavelength can be a long pulse, can be a nanosecond pulse, or can be a picosecond pulse in terms of its pulse duration. Now, this means how fast is a laser being emitted. A picosecond pulse is the fastest emission with the shortest span of thermal relaxation time. On the other hand, a long pulse laser basically emits in the millisecond duration. Now, again, what the difference does this really make? After all, they're all 1064 nanometers. Now, it really is depending on what kind of chromophore you're trying to target. Now, while anti is very suitable for treating pigment in the skin, it is also used for hair removal, for example. On the other hand, we also have your Q-Switch nanosecond and the lasers and your picosecond and the lasers. And I like to use um, basically the picosecond and the laser to treat unwanted pigmentation. And this can be epidermal pigment as well as dermal pigment. Now, 1064 nanometers is very good at targeting deeper dermal pigmentation. I have my other preference for epidermal pigment in Asian skin, which I'll go to in the next subcategory. We have another wavelength of laser known as the Alexandrite laser, which I'm going to come to now. The Alexandrite laser is emitting at a wavelength of 755 nanometers. Now, this wavelength is very good at treating pigmentation once again. Also used to treat tattoo pigment, particularly able to treat green particles. Your 1064 NDA is not able to treat green, but your Alexandrite laser is able to treat your greens very well. So for green tattoo ink, it can be removed with an Alexandrite laser. Remember that. In general, the longer the wavelength, the deeper it penetrates the skin. So the 755 will penetrate deeper than the 532, but not as deep as the 1064. So it's really good at treating maybe higher dermal pigmentation as well as epidermal pigment. Now, because the 532 nanometer wavelength is a little bit more uh, risky in Asian skin types when treating epidermal pigments such as freckles and sunspots, I like to use a 755 nanometer wavelength. There's less risk of PIH or post inflammatory hyperpigmentation when treating Asian skin types. And then we talk about other lasers such as the carbon dioxide laser. 
Now, carbon dioxide laser has a 10,600 nanometer infrared wavelength. Now, this is usually an ablative laser, either fractionated or non-fractionated, which we will go through in detail later on. Now, basically, a carbon dioxide laser is used as an ablative laser for various indications. For example, if you have unwanted growth on the skin, like unwanted skin tag, a sebaceous gland hyperplasia, a stringoma, these are lesions that grow out of the skin and they can be successfully removed or erased with a carbon dioxide laser. You can also use a fractionated carbon dioxide laser very effectively to actually remove fine lines, wrinkles, and resurface acne scarring. So again, a carbon dioxide laser you can see is also used as a surgical tool. So sometimes surgeons can also use it in the ablative form to make certain incisions or cuts. So it's very, very clean compared to a surgical incision. A fractionated laser is basically a technology where you break down a laser beam into multiple small beamlets. So it's basically delivering the laser energy in a pixelated format. So why a fractionated laser over a non-fractionated laser? In a fractionated format, the laser beam is delivered in beamlets, so there's a lot of islands of sparing. So in an ablative laser like a CO2 laser, this is very essential because it basically gives you faster recovery time as not all of the epidermis is damaged. So what you have is islands that are intact and basically your epidermal regrowth can start from this island. So less downtime, less risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, easier recovery. So decades ago, before the advent of fractionated lasers, when people utilized ablative lasers, they were full ablative. So there was always a lot of weeping, ooziness, and feared downtime, and more complications, especially in darker skin phototypes, because basically the risk of hyperpigmentation is greater when you don't leave islands of sparing. Now, if we switch to the non-ablative laser format, for example, commonly used laser like a picosecond laser or various wavelengths, for example, can be also again fractional or non-fractional. So when I do a treatment with a picosecond laser, I can first deliver the picosecond beam in the standard beamlet and then switch the handpiece to a fractionated handpiece to do further resurfacing. So the resurfacing in a non-ablative laser will not damage the epidermal layer, but will go bypass the top layer into the dermal layer. But basically, there will be islands of remodeling and basically what we call laser-induced optical breakdown. So again, both broad categories of laser can be even further classified in the same laser as whether you're delivering it in a fractionated form or a non-fractionated form. Okay, let's first look at lasers that can treat red and target pesky vessels. So again, that will be your 595 nanometer wavelength laser or 585 nanometer wavelength laser. This pulse dye laser is very effective because it targets hemoglobin as a chromophore in the skin. So anything that's really red, like a blood vessel that is unwanted, or basically maybe a fresh red surgical scar or red striae can be effectively treated with this spectrum of lasers. For hyperpigmentation, the most commonly used wavelengths will be the 532 nanometer wavelength and the 1064 nanometer wavelength that is found in the NDYAT laser, be it in the QSWITCH format or the picosecond laser upgraded format. Now, you can also use the 755 nanometer wavelength, which, which is an alexandrite wavelength in between these two, 532 and 1064. So again, in my practice, I like to use all three wavelengths and have all three wavelengths both in the long pulse format as well as in the picosecond format because they're used effectively for various types of pigmentation. For example, you can use it to treat epidermal pigments such as lentigens, unwanted freckles. You can use it to treat acquired pigmentation in the dermal layer like Horry's nevus, nevus of Ota. And you can also use it to treat tattoo pigments, for example, your reds, your greens, and your black tattoo inks. Now again, not every tattoo ink can be treated effectively with these lasers because basically a tattoo ink has a specific color and the wavelengths on the market may not be able to selectively target those unique colors. But generally, if you have a black tattoo pigment or multicolored tattoo that has red, greens, a bit of yellows and blacks, this can be well treated. However, um, again, like I mentioned, if it's a multicolored tattoo, do seek uh, further clarification with your professional before knowing whether all of the tattoo pigment ink can be removed selectively. Finally, we come to resurfacing lasers and the most commonly utilized lasers will be the carbon dioxide laser or the erbium laser. Again, this can be delivered in full ablative form or in a fractionated ablative form. Now, with these lasers, it is very effective at treating basically unwanted growths. So you can vaporize unwanted pesky growths such as sebaceous gland hyperplasia, seborrheic keratosis, for example. And it can also be utilized in a fractionated form typically to do resurfacing. So if you have basically maybe photoaged skin where there's a lot of fine lines or even deeper lines, uh, smokers lines, and you may also have maybe dilated pores, and maybe uneven skin texture, this is very effectively utilized to resurface the skin. It can also be utilized to treat sometimes 
fresh surgical scars, if you want to sort of blend the scars better, you can first start with a pulse eye laser and then follow up with an additional fractional CO2 laser or erbium laser as well. I think the key to having successful treatment is basically go to the right practitioner that basically understands the biology as well as the cosmetic concerns of your skin. So again, understanding how your skin interacts with the lasers at various skin phototypes, as well as whether there's an underlying medical concern such as eczema or acne is also important to ensure that your practitioner is able to treat the skin concerns without causing negative side effects. The other thing that's important is also, also to go to somebody that has a range, a wide repertoire of tools because not one laser can treat everything. So in my practice, for example, I will always have a range of wavelengths because I know clearly that not every single concern can be treated with a single platform. Hi, I'm Dr. Anthony Yong, a dermatologist and dermatological surgeon. If you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow our channel.